out of the business. You know, John's had a pretty interesting career. Uh, at this exact event back in 2006 was the first time I had contact with John. I want to just show you where John has come from as a district manager. Uh, this is pretty interesting. This gives a lot of hope to a lot of people. And by the way, I didn't want to fast forward that one, so I don't know if I have control here. In his first eight months, uh, John, out of the block, his office sold $145,000, which is not too bad. Excuse me, not too bad for a new district manager. Uh, the first full year, he bumped that up to $264,000. And I can tell you, at that level, that's, that's not so good. But uh, anyway, that was 2005. In 2006, he started getting better and better. 2006, it went up to 490,000 in office sales for the year. In 2007, his office again improved to $780,000 for the year. By the way, I don't know if there's any manager in Vector that has earned more quantum bonus than Mr. John Vector. So, uh, if you put a big dollar amount up there, the guy will get the job done. 2008, $861,000. 2009 was his breakout year, first million dollar year, first million dollar office in the NORPAC division, besides their great leader Isaac Tolpin, first district manager ever to do it uh, in 2009, a million sixty-nine. That's really when John came onto the national scene. We knew about him in the region when he was doing 500, 700, 800, but Nationally, that's really where he burst onto the scene. And 2010 was his just explosive year. Uh, Silver Cup National Championship year at over $1.6 million. That's a tough job to grow from $1.6 million. Had a fantastic year. Uh, won the Day of Decadence this year in 2011 with $1.5 million in sales. You know, you can sum up that career in one word, improvement. Improvement is not where you start in our business, it's where you finish, and it is a journey. Not everybody is fantastic out of the gates. Uh, some people, it takes a little while to get them going. And John certainly has done a fantastic job of proving not only himself, but he's done it uh, the right way. He's actually innovated some great programs. Uh, the personal, personal recruiting program was really, uh, in the Western region, was birthed out of John's office and developed out of this innovative training that he has, and uh, we're all benefiting now from that. Uh, here's a picture of John on the day that he was adopted with the big furry bear. Look at how cute you were. I don't know what happened, but man, you're cute. There. So that's, that's good. Hey, Jody grows up fast. There's uh, John Isaac Tolman. I think that's John getting his AM promotion. That was a long time ago. And you look identical, you look the same. That's not fair, by the way. I look like I've aged 100 years since this conference started. So uh, it's awesome. Uh, John giving one of his massive push reports. Actually, that looked like there was a lot of people standing behind you, so maybe that wasn't a massive push report. Maybe that was one of the smaller ones earlier in your career. Like, you know, I'm sitting down early. But uh, there's John doing I don't know what with Aaron Forsman and Jeremy Bell and some wood monkey, so that's cool. Uh, this is as white as John gets right there. Some of the boys from NORPAC. Uh, some more people from NORPAC. See John in the background on the right there with Peter Voog and Kevin Elbert in the back. Uh, Wes Goddard, Peter Voog, John Bedford. I can't tell what you have. You have, oh, Vegas Trophies. That's at our Conference of Champions there. Uh, Chris Gary and John Bedford trying to be as serious as possible. Uh, and that's a nice picture. Oh, that's the next picture you're going to see, by the way, is one of the rarest pictures we have of John Bedford of anywhere. It's a picture of John in a casino. <laughs> so, you know, there's not many of those in the world because he never really goes, so that's good. But that was him at our, one of our mob meetings, which is great. As long as we hit that part four, everybody's happy at the end of the night. Uh, John, that was uh, one of the push periods where John was the, the last man standing. He's really brought the push periods in the NORPAC division up to a really high level. And it's great to see. Um, that's at uh, our boat cruise that we have from time to time. There's John giving a speech. Obviously, a lot of people around the country, not only in the Western region, love to hear what John has on his mind. Uh, collecting some more awards there with Kevin Albert. 
that is a picture of the hallway of some uh, awards at the Conference of Champions in Las Vegas. Good looking guy right next. Yeah, there we are. Look at that. So that's also rare. Two best looking guys in the whole region in one photo. So that's cool. We make sure uh, nobody sells that on eBay. Uh, some more million dollar plaques given away. That's when John won his Rolex. First time an office does over a million dollars. Get a beautiful Rolex watch. And that's when John did that. And uh, another conference there. There's some of the Norpakians. John's right over Peter's shoulder there on the right uh, behind, looking as scary as he possibly can. That's at the Norpak Christmas party. There's his parents, Bill and Jeremy, and the Dibbity Dogs. That was this summer at a summer conference, believe it or not. Yes, that is a football field. That's how crazy people in Norpak are. They do their conferences outside at football stadiums. That was fun. I was uh, able to be there. It was a great time. Uh, I, I brought up Isaac Tolpin, his division manager, say a few words about John, and I just want to say, John, congratulations. You're a true inspiration to every district manager, not only in our region, but in our company. You really have made a tremendous difference in the Western region, and uh, I'm just so proud of you to know where you came from, and to know where you started, and to what you've built for yourself, the life that you've built for yourself, and your reputation, your career. I just couldn't be prouder of you, and uh, congratulations on Hall of Fame. It's been a lot of years with John. NORPAC is uh, permanently changed forever because of his influence, because of his leadership. And I want to share something. Sometimes you think of NORPAC being innovative, uh, great ideas, we're trying things. Well, there was a time where John was innovating, trying things, sharing ideas, and I was that manager saying, John, just follow the program. <laughs> you just gotta follow the program. And it really was the wrong thing to do because in that man's mind is true genius about business. In that man's mind is true genius about how to treat people and how to encourage people and how to run meetings where everybody feels special. What's in that guy's mind was a major part of what helped NORPAC have the DNA it has today and tremendous success of so many people. He's been a tremendous leader. He truly cares more than I've ever seen anybody care for people. He will do anything for his people. In and out of the business, he volunteers uh, with his church and leads youth and uh, leads them on uh, adventures, uh, ministry-wise, and uh, it's just amazing to see what God's doing with them, and it's amazing to see how he has transformed his business, and in turn, transformed so many businesses. I'm thrilled to get to work with this gentleman. I'm excited to continue to work with him in the future. He's an amazing assistant division manager, helping Norpac do some amazing things, and uh, couldn't be happier to get to speak about John Bedford's. Congratulations, we have our newest member of Vector Marketing's Hall of Fame, John Bedford. Again, 
without the help of uh, so many people in and out the biz, um, this night would not be possible for me. Great accomplishments in life are never achieved by one person alone. And <clears throat> that's why I fell in love with God, my parents, and this company. <sighs> my faith is very important to me. And uh, I know religion is a very sensitive subject in business, but I've learned <clears throat> in this business that I should never fear people or what people think. And it would not be right to uh, not thank God today for this achievement. Without God, <clears throat> I am nothing, and He has blessed me beyond measure. Thank you for uh, investing in me and having confidence that I was worth the money and the time. Your confidence has helped me more than you probably know. <clears throat> also, thank you for always taking care of me and my staff. Your generosity is uh, appreciated great. And the region staff, <clears throat> thank you all so much for your help. Um, I know I'm a pain in the ass at times. Um, I'm sure most of us underestimate the amount of support you guys provide for us managers and reps, but we are all blessed to have you helping us on a daily basis. Tom, um, I know you wanted Isaac uh, to shut me down for uh, a few years uh, when I was a DM. I'm not hurt by it at all. Uh, you just had the guts to say what everyone was thinking. I also appreciate you taking a shot of Jaeger with me, even though you never want to. <laughs> and I also appreciate your uh, banker knowledge that has helped my office a lot. Manny and Leslie, thank you always uh, for booking my flights, which are always crazy and frequent. You guys never let me down. I appreciate all of your help the last few years. Gilbert, when I found out that you're the new SPM, I was fired up, man. Uh, I know I've been a pain in the ass already with my outrageous request for uh, contest payouts and whatnot. Not <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I always have a great time hanging out with you. Uh, Super Bowl weekend this, uh, this year is going to be epic, my friend. The suite is bigger than my house. Uh, DBMs, um, thank you all for being class acts. I look up to every single one of you and aspire to uh, join you at the same table someday. Dan, thank you for all the poker knowledge and always recognizing my success and making me feel good. Thank you also for developing Carl Gedris and Matt Anders, who have both changed my life forever. Dave. <sighs> Dave, I respect you very much. Your talks at region events have always inspired me. <coughs> and the way you take care of your family, especially your dog, is hard for me. Also, the fact that you play baseball always made me relate to you very well. <coughs> Wes, thanks for always beating me. <laughs> but the Kirkland office did ship more biz in 2010 because of you and your office and Matt Boland. Thank you for setting the pace the last few years and being the competitor you are. JP, I will never forget our combo at SLC in Texas. Thank you for calling me out and giving me the right perspective. Just show me that you care. Casey, I really enjoyed getting to know you better the last couple years. Our trip to uh, Dion was epic. You possess skills outside the biz that is mind blowing. <laughs> I will also never forget our convo at the pool 
at my first SLC. Ryan, I really needed that. Thank you. Austin Metcalf, <laughs> everything happens for a reason, my man. Um, thank you for being in Vegas with me. Uh, the last day we were there a couple days ago. Um, it was big time. All right. <laughs> Carl, uh, you are the man. I remember cross training with you back in 2008. You treated me as an equal, even though I wasn't a top manager yet. I learned a lot from you that week. The way you ran the biz with confidence, and the way you loved your people. I owe you a lot, and you never expect or expected anything in return. I have a lot of respect for you, always helping other managers in this company. And you do it for free and don't expect any kind of payment. You just do it from your heart. That's the kind of people I want to follow and respect. Paul. Paul Comstock. I love you, man. Uh, the DR trip was the start of our friendship. The game we played on the beach was epic. I wish I was the one throwing the ball when you pitched. Same word of honor, the last KOC started a great, lifelong friendship. In your Hall of Fame speech, you said that the first five years in the biz, I thought you were an a-hole, and you thought I was a quiet <laughs> Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I agree with you, and you were wrong about me. <laughs> Real talk, Paul. I consider you one of my best friends now. And uh, you're a big part in getting Rowan and myself together. Thank you for that. Norpac DMs, I love working with you guys. We have grown so much together, and I'm proud to be part of this decision uh, with all of you. And uh, Chris Gary, uh, we've grown a lot together, man. You know, at one point, I didn't know if we'd ever be friends, but consider you like a brother. Scores, Michael Scorby, you were the number one PR setter in the division as an assist manager in 2009 and you were a catalyst of Kirkland being the first office to do a million dollars in the state of Washington. You make me proud, and I'm so proud of you and what you've created in Tri-Cities. You have a bright future in this company. Matt Anders, you're definitely my little brother. You are a gift from God back at the end of 2008. You may not know it, but that was one of my lowest points in my life. And I thought about leaving the bits. But you came into my office in my life. And you brought energy back, not just to the office, but to me. I will never forget our talk in no way. You are my little brother. I love you, man. <laughs> you are talented in this. You will hit Hall of Fame someday, no matter how hard it gets. Jeremy Bell, when I first started the biz, I looked up to you. The most of all the DMs in the division. Thank you for being such a great friend. Rowan and I had a blast in Salem last month. I will miss you dearly, my friend, and wish you nothing but the best as you start a new DM, uh, division in NorCal. <coughs> that you said, we started the same summer in Bellingham 2002. Look at us now. I'm still sorry and amazed in how you made it as a DM after I developed you. <laughs> it was 2005. I had no idea how to develop a sales manager. All I taught you was how to drop off orders at the UPS store. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you now, man. And I'm really excited for you and know you're going to blow up this summer. Jake Vallejo, my old district manager, I'm really excited you're here. Um, I learned so much from you in the 23 months I've worked with you. You had 75 recruits my first summer and then 300K. You were the number one manager in productivity that summer. That means that you cared about your reps the most of any manager. You ran the business the right way, and I hope you realize that you developed me, and I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for you. 
I have realized that developing a champion is more meaningful than being one. You're an amazing person, and I will never forget you, and I'm forever indebted to you. Judy and Gio, you guys are amazing. The leading scorers on the Kirkland team. Joffrey, I've said it many times before, you have the heart of gold. I'm so proud of both of you for hitting 200k this past year. If it weren't for you guys, our office would not have hit a million in 2009. Without you guys, our office would not have won the Silver Cup in 2010. You two are the living proof in our office of what's possible as an FSM and help new managers nowadays greatly. I love you guys. My AMIs, Michelle, Josh, Anna, and Eric, I'm so proud of you guys. I remember being an AMI. When I first started, it was the hardest position out there. But you guys are one in a million type of human beings. You love helping the office and helping other people. Keep up the great work and you will have a bright future in our office in this company. My current staff, <coughs> Matt, Forrest, Aiko, Julia, and Bree, I love you all. You guys are the oxygen of our office. You're the most selfless people in the world, and I'm really excited to work with you guys, and you guys do the job simply to help other people. The world and Vector offices need more people like you guys. You have all gone through so many challenges that most people would not make it through. I know as a staff we've had our uh, Zunas and sometimes the animals do get out of cages and it is crazy. But like I say, nothing ever gets severed in our staff, only fractured. Nothing will break us and you're all amazingly good people. And to my team that came, this is really your Hall of Fame. You guys have made history and broke records. You guys are the hardest working people ever. And prove to people that you guys are not a one-hit wonder and the city of Kirkland can achieve anything. Thank you for all of your hard work. Adam Herman, thank you for being here today and sharing this with me and my family. You've been one of my best friends since I was 12. You're one of the successful people I know. I'm proud of you for starting your own business and being so successful doing it. There's nothing you wouldn't do for me. Everyone deserves to have a friend like you. <clears throat> Your family is one of the nicest families I know. I will never forget the baseball road trips and the college road trips we've taken. I would literally not be here on earth if it weren't for you having to grab the steering wheel on our road trips as I fell as I used to fall asleep when I drive all the time. <laughs> Thank you for being such a great friend to me for the past 10 years. Andy Granahan, you've been one of my best friends since high school. At least one good thing came from dating that person for like a day in high school. I know we don't get to see much these days, but every time we see each other, it's as if we haven't skipped a beat in our friendship. You're the most successful female I know in a male-dominated industry. I'm so proud of you, and we will be best friends for life. You're a big reason why I wanted to be successful after college. You said something to me in a car one day, and you said, Betty, you're going to be successful after college. I know it. That gave me confidence, and it's held me accountable all these years <laughs> after high school. And in the moments of doubt when I wanted to quit, I couldn't let you down. Sydney, you're the most savage 19 year old I've ever met. 20. 20. <laughs> Just turned 20, sorry. You're like me being adopted to a better life. You're resilient and have the most amount of talent I've ever seen in a teenager, now 20, in this business. <laughs> I know you're going to make your family, especially your mom, proud when you go out as a DM this summer. I am super proud of you and excited for your future in this company. Danielle, 
You're an amazing person. You have been the catalyst to our office PR program. Without you, our office would have never gone big. That's what, I, that's what I love about our office. You take away one person from the office and it would be nothing. You're an amazing mother to Easton and he's blessed to have you as a mom. I can't wait for the day you get promoted to DM. You deserve it so much. Isaac, you're an exceptional man of faith. I have so much respect for you. Thank you for never giving up on me when everyone else did. You have taught me so much outside the biz. That's more important than the biz. I respect you with the same kind of respect I have for my dad. That's the greatest compliment I could give another man. I am truly blessed to have you in my life as a DVM, a mentor, and a brother. You're such a great example and a great man of faith. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. PJ, you said I can't thank anybody that's not going to be here, but you said people, not dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give some love to Anna. She passed away exactly a year ago. She was a family to me. When I would have a bad day, she'd always be waiting for me to wag her tail. It would never be my side. And my new dog, Chelsea, hyper is pretty much myself. <laughs> Quite a handful, but love her to death. Mike Lau, you're my brother for life. You were such a savage sales manager in 2010 when we won the Silver Cup. You sacrificed everything for your team. That was your team that year. I've never seen anyone work so hard for so long. I don't know how you did it. You've done so much for others and myself. I look forward to growing old and having family someday with you as a brother. There's nothing I want to do for you. Shane, I know your parents are here tonight to see your DM promotion. Barbara and Jeff, I don't know if you guys truly understand what a remarkable young man you've raised. You have been there since the beginning. You were my first 10 k fast starter and have been by my side since you started the business. You are my best friend and have been there for me through some of the lowest points of my life and some of the greatest. In the life of Kirkland off in the life of the Kirkland office, great reps and AMs have come and gone. You've been there always. You've been the common thread throughout the whole process of getting to where we're at today. I love you, man. You're such a caring human being. You have taught me so much in the past six years. There's nothing more I want than for you to have your own office again and get the same level of success you created in the Kirkland office. I would not be here today if it were not for you. I owe you so much and don't think I could ever repay what you've done for me. I will be here for you no matter what and I look forward to being lifelong best friends with you, brother. Rowan. You're everything I've prayed for. You're the most amazing girl I've ever met. You bring out the best in me and make me care about the future more than ever. I know a lot of managers have given me a hard time about a statement I made a while back. You can either have a girl or you can have CPO, but you can't have both. <laughs> Well, we started dating in October, and the fall campaign was the only campaign the Kirkland office grew. So I guess I was wrong. I think it's now you can either have the wrong girl, or you can have CPO. But you can't have both. I thank God for placing you in my life. 
I love you, Roanne, and thank you for the best three romantic months of my life. You're so loving and caring. You're the most beautiful girl inside and out. I feel like I'm the most blessed guy in the world to have you in my life. I look forward to the future with you. You're truly the girl of my dreams and a gift from God. I'm almost done, PJ, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad, I love you too so much. In 1987, you adopted an abused, unwanted, scared seven year old boy from South Korea. God had a plan for us three. We may have a small family, but the love is immeasurable. You two are the most amazing people I've ever met. I was so blessed to have gotten adopted by you two. You have provided so much for me the past 25 years of my life. You have taught me how to be a good person. You taught and showed me how to have passion, how to love, and to do everything with integrity and to never give up. Mom, you always told me that if you're going to do something, you do it right. You were a teacher for over 40 years, and you did it because of your passion to help kids. For a long time, I thought you were a teacher that just taught math. Kind of like people think this company is just us selling knives. You were teaching kids life skills. You were a hard teacher and a hard mom, but you did it because you cared. I get that now. If all the teachers in the world were like you, the world of education would be flawless. I have so much respect for you all. If there are a whole of fame for teachers, you would be in it. You're the one that also instilled faith into my life. You took me to Mass every week growing up, even though I didn't want to go. Thank you for helping me find God. Dad, I love you so much. You left corporate America to start your own business because you have so much integrity. I've learned so much about ethics from you and Mom. You one time shopped at Trader Joe's and went home to realize that they didn't charge you for a case of wine. You drove back to the store <coughs> to pay for the case of wine. I know you and Mom did this again just a few months ago because another store didn't charge you for something and you went back to pay for it. Not even one in a million people in the world would do something like that. If everyone in this world possessed your integrity and love and passion, there would be no conflicts in this world. Growing up, you coached my baseball team, mostly because I sucked and got to never play. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, I thought you were just teaching me baseball skills, but I was really wrong. You were teaching me life skills that I still use today, especially in the biz. You never missed one game I played, and even sacrificed making more money to support me and watch me play. You two have taught me most of the life lessons and skills that make me successful today in this business and life. There aren't enough lifetimes that I could possibly have to ever repay with what you have done for me. You two are Hall of Fame parents. <coughs> And I got all my good looks from you guys, too. <laughs> if I've ever helped anyone in this office and this company, it's because of how you raised me. You two have had a ripple effect in this company. The reason why I treat others so well is because you show me blood isn't necessary to be a family. My office is a big family to me, and I love my staff like my own blood. Thank you for adopting me and providing me with the most amazing life possible. I love both of you with all my heart. The $5,000 from the company for the Hall of Fame, just so you know, 
at the cashier, I'm giving it all to you guys. I know you've been talking about going to Spain, so hopefully this will help out a little bit. And then Jake, there's nothing over the 5000 but I have an extra $1,000 just for you, because you've done so much for me, and you probably have no idea how much of love thankfully you've had in my life. Thank you, everyone here. This is a great company, in fact, in marketing. And I fell in love with this company because of the philosophy of just focusing on the people. We're in this room for the right reason. And this Hall of Fame was created by many. Just love everyone and never give up. And if I can achieve this, anybody in this room can. Thank you.